for you. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So welcome to day five of my seven days of Christmas series. And I'm joined today by a special guest, my mum. Say hello. hello. <laughs> there you go. So we're going to be making a mixed media canvas today and mum's gonna supervise. So let's go on and do it. <laughs> so the canvas that we're going to create today is an eight by eight canvas a flat canvas that I got from indigoblue.com, my friends over at Indigo Blue. And I'll be using quite a lot of Indigo Blue products in this canvas, in the creation of this canvas. So first of all, I'm going to have a flick through and try and find a stencil that I want to use to put some modeling paste through to create some texture into the background. And I've chosen the Postal stencil, mainly because it has three lovely heart shapes on there. I'm gonna put it to one side first of all and then bring out the fine modeling paste again from indigo blue and i'm going to apply a liberal amount of modeling paste all over the canvas but because it's a boring process and you don't want to see me just slapping this all over i'm going to jump to the end there you go all jumped so i'm placing the post off stencil over in the top left hand corner and i'm just going to smooth some of the modeling paste through the stencil and then peel it off. Now, as you can see, I've got three of those heart shapes that I want in that corner. And then I'm just going to smooth out some of the other uh, wrinkles that pulling the stencil off has left behind. Now, in the end, this will get covered up, but it doesn't really matter. I, I wanted to get a little bit more extra te uh, texture in there. So these are the Ar Archival Cast um, Spirit or Rising Spirit 2 resin casts from Prima Marketing and they've all got little eyelets on them so I'm just going to remove those with a pair of pliers and then I can stick them straight down into the modelling paste and because it's still wet um, it will act as a bond, it will act as a glue to hold those in place and stick them down but it also allows you to be able to just manoeuvre them a little bit um, before they start to dry. I managed to set all that in one single take without making a mistake or taking a breath. How good am I? Okay, so on to the next step. So for the next step, I want to add some more texture into that modeling paste. So I'm going to use these glass fragments from Ikea that were given to me as part of some happy mail by my friend, Linda Simpson. So as you can see, I'm just going to scatter some across the top and across the bottom. And then with my finger, I'm just going to push the glass fragments into the modeling paste to make sure that they bed in and seal themselves in and the modeling paste acts as a glue for those glass fragments. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to push everything in. Whatever's loose will drop off on its own once it's all dry. So the majority of that is now dry. There's none of the glass now going to drop off. It's all held in place, but because of the depth and the thickness of the embossing paste, or the modeling paste, um, it's actually gonna take longer to dry than with just the heat gun. So I'm gonna set this to one side now and leave this for a good couple of hours. I may even leave it overnight, and then we'll be back later. So it's been a good couple of hours. In the meantime, I've been able to cut out some of my cogs and gears from uh, the Tim Holtz Biggs Gadget Gears die from Sizzix, and I've cut them into portions. So I've just taken a pair of scissors, as you can see here, uh, as illustrative purposes, and I've laid them out on my canvas where I want them to go. So using the super thick slap it on gel medium from indigoblue.com, I'm now going to glue the whole lot down. But as per usual, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me sticking stuff down onto a canvas because that is just so ultra boring. Thank you, telephone. So I'm just going to do one corner and then I'm going to jump to the end where I've completed and stuck all of them down.
So you join me again towards the end where I'm just removing any of the excess gel medium from inside the holes from the gears and the sprockets. And then once I've removed all that excess, I'm going to grab my heat gun and then heat it as much as possible to get it all dry. So now it's time to add my first colour. So this base colour is conifer green acrylic paint from Do Crafts and it's a very kind of viridian green, almost a bluey green, very deep, nice Christmassy green. And I'm going to cover the entire base of the canvas with the green paint. But I'm going to take a little bit of care, just going around my resin items. I don't want to paint those as well. I'm only going to paint the actual base uh, of the canvas itself. But once again, because it's a repetitive process, I'm going to show you a little bit and then I'm going to jump to the end when I've painted the entire of the base. The main portion of the base is now completely painted and I'm just going to go around the edges and trying to cover as many of those nooks and crannies, get as much of the paint into those nooks and crannies um, and trying to get rid of all the little white spots that you know will show up on camera but don't necessarily see with my naked eye. It's because the light's shining on some of them, it looks like I've missed bits but actually I haven't so I'm just going to go over until I'm happy with it. I'm just going to give it a quick dry with a heat gun to make sure um, that everything's nice and then any areas that I can see that I've missed I'm just going to quickly go over those again before starting to paint my heart. And the paint I've chosen to use on the heart is the Ruby Slippers Metallic Acrylic Paint from Indigo Blue. Again, now because this is kind of a, it's almost an opaque paint, metallic paint, the green bits that I've actually managed to catch on the sides will be covered once I've added one or two coats of the red paint to it. Now because I'm going to do one coat, then dry it, add another coat, then dry it, then again, I'm not going to show you the whole process of adding the three coats that I'm going to put onto the heart. So instead, I'm just gonna show you the one coat, maybe a little bit of the second, and then I'll jump to the end where it's complete. Now I'm happy with the three coats of red, it's time to grab some white gesso. I'm using the indigo blue white gesso. And I'm going to touch up some of the areas on the other resin pieces where I have caught them with the green paint. Now because I'm using lighter colours on these pieces, then I do need just to get rid of those bits where I've gone over the, um, over the edges and not painted within the lines. My hands haven't been as steady as they should have been. Now throughout this entire process, I will keep touching up with the green paint where I've gone over and then I'll keep touching up again um, just to make sure that I have some nice lines there. So you just see me add some of that white gesso and then give it a quick dry and then next of all what I'll be doing is um, getting some design advice by mum who's just putting a hand in there and then we're going to um, move on to the next stage. And that simply is just adding some more of that gesso to make sure we've got a nice um, base coat for the colours that I'm going to be adding a little bit later on to make sure that any of the green paint that I've managed to catch has gone and been covered. So the next stage for me is to start painting the flame. So I'm going to be using the Burning Bonfire Orange Acrylic Paint, again from Indigo Blue. This isn't metallic this time, this is just matte. So I'm just going to give the, the flames a base coat of the orange paint and then give it a quick dry. I, I only need one coat of this because I have pre-gessoed so that it has a nice tooth to hold on to it. It is quite opaque so I don't need to give it any more than one coat. Now the orange is dry, my next coat is going to be the Golden Sun Yellow Acrylic Paint and for this I'm just going to dry brush the yellow paint across the top of the flames. Now what this does, it will pick out the raised areas of that resin piece and leave all the orange in the recesses. So it will look as though you've spent ages 
picking out the detailing on the flame when actually you haven't. It's a bit of a cheat, but it's very, very effective. So just to make sure it's dry before moving on, I'm just going to give it a quick blast with the heat gun just to set it and then we can start adding a little bit more of a highlight. And I'm bringing out that white gesso again and again I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of the white gesso over the central part of the flame just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Next we're on to the wings. So for these I'm going to paint them into this snow white metallic acrylic paint. So this is a white metallic paint. So I'm going to give both of the wings a really good coat of this um, beautiful, beautiful shimmery paint. And because I've already pre-gessoed them, then the green bits will disappear completely. This isn't going to be the, the only paint I'm going to add onto the wings. We'll be adding some more later on, but as a base coat, it's absolutely stunning. So covering both of the angel wings with that metallic paint, I'm going to give it a quick dry and where I've caught some of the white paint onto the background, you'll just see me touching up again and removing those little catches um, as best as I possibly can. So I'm just adding in and making sure I'm keeping those um, very crisp fine lines where um, the pieces are meeting. So once that's done, we're ready to move on to the final stage and that's to add our dry brush gold paint. So for this I'm using the Goldfinger metallic gold paint from Indigo Blue and I'm just going to dry brush over the entire of the base, over the cogs, over all those glass fragments and pick out all the highlights in that beautiful shimmering gold. This process does take some time because it's a process of gradually building up the colour on all the highlights um, and because of that I've obviously sped the process up but I'm going to show you a certain section of it, most of the bottom part of it, and then I'm going to jump to the end where I've also completed the top part, and then that's where I'm going to start adding some of the gold paint elsewhere on the canvas. So the base of the canvas is pretty much done. You just see me adding the finishing touches to the base there and then I can start to add some of that gold paint over the top of that snow white shimmering um, metallic paint as well. So I'm going to add some gold highlights to the wings um, and then I'm also going to add some of the gold across the heart and also just a very, very tiny amount onto the flame as well. So that gold metallic paint has now picked out some really nice detail so it's time just to add the final piece of the resin. So this is a tiny little head shaped piece which sits in the alcove on the heart which I'm painting in the gold and once it's done I'm just going to leave it to dry for a few seconds then we'll come back to it. Now that the tiny little headpiece is dry, it's time to attach it inside the alcove on the heart. So to do that, I'm just going to be using some bog standard PVA craft glue. Get your head out of shot, Mike. And then I'm just going to drop the little head into the alcove and then set it to side just to dry for a few minutes. And then I'll be back. So looking at the base of the canvas, Although it's got the gold on there, it still looks a little bit flat. So I needed to bring some color into the background of that canvas. So to do that, I'm going to use some of these Winter Blooms self-adhesive pearls from Dovecraft, which is a UK based company. And I'm just going to take some of those pearls and I'm going to add them in random strategic places around the base of the canvas. So I'm introducing into the background those colors of the red, the green and the gold also with those pearls. So I'm going to place some of the red ones around and then I'm going to team them up with the gold and the green too. So 
So adding these colours into that base helps to make the canvas um, coalesce to be a bit more cohesive in its colour theme and its, um, in its overall look. It kind of helps to balance and also adds a little bit of extra interest into that background. Because the adhesive on these pearls is actually very very strong um, I don't need to add any glue underneath them. They will hold and they will form a very strong bond. So just teaming up some of the final, uh, final pieces, the final pearls to go on the canvas and then that's it. I'm going to call this canvas complete. And if anybody is interested in purchasing this canvas, then it will be added to my website by the time you're watching this video. So this should go live on Wednesday, the 7th of December. So if you're watching this and you'd like to purchase this, then you need to get in there quick because there only is one of them. So as I say, it will be added to the website by Wednesday, the 7th of December. So, what did you think? That was nice. It's nice. Very nice. Good. Yeah, it's good. Loads of confidence. That's what we like. So, I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from us for now. Bye. We'll, well, I'll see you all again tomorrow. Bye for now. Merry Christmas. <gasps> Look at my hands.